Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Indeed, you are too faithful to fail us. Let's say together the word of God is quick and powerful. It will set me free and give me victory. So I'll open my heart and I will say the word. If you believe it, put your hands together for the king one more time. Amen. And so, Father, again, I testify that Jesus heals and Jesus saves. I thank you for the privilege to preach your word again. Lord, please stretch forth your hand to heal and save, comfort the afflicted, and encourage the weak. Holy Spirit, please rest upon me as I lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Can we acknowledge our Lord one more time with a wonderful clap of him? He's worthy. You may be seated, please. We've just uh, entered into the second half of the year. We, we are halfway through the year. Now, the halfway mark through in the endeavor can be challenging. Halfway mark through any dream, in any project, you know, any schooling, any innovation, any marriage, any activity can be challenging when you get through you know, the halfway mark. It's a time when you try to stabilize yourself for the rest of the journey because part of your strength has already been expended. It's an important time to pause and to encourage yourself so that you can finish the journey well. Because you, know, you, 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 are, you are just wondering, uh, you, are, you are depending, you, know, you, are, you are even beginning to wonder whether you've made enough progress, you are beginning to wonder whether you can actually make it through the very end, end of the journey. It's a time to renew your vision and to renew your strength. It's a time to remind yourself of your goals so that you can stay focused and then you can stay on track. May the Lord strengthen you for the balance of the year. Amen? May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you as you press on toward the year. May the God, God receive and show that all your dreams would come through this year. May this be your best year ever. Would you put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Our theme for the year is, O oh Lord, revive us. And our scripture is Malachi 3.3 3 from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, God will sit as a refiner of silver, burning away the dross. He will Purify the Levites, refining them like gold and silver so that they may once again bring acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. Now, as I've said repeatedly, I believe that the Lord wants us to submit ourselves to be purified so that we can handle the blessings that he has in store for us. Now, this morning, I felt the need to revisit a message we had earlier in the year, and I think it's important because it will help us to stay focused. I want to remind you that God has many blessings in store for us, but we must contend for those blessings. Amen? We've been contending for the past six months. We need to strengthen ourselves and then contend for the blessings even for the rest of the year. This is going to be our best year ever then we must contend for every blessing that God has in store for us. And so, as we enter into the second part of the year, I want to encourage you to keep contending for your blessings. Don't, don't give up just because you haven't seen the answers to your prayers yet. Keep contending for your blessings. Keep fighting. Keep pressing on. Your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. If you believe it, put your hands together for the King of Kings. Amen. Now by content, I mean fight for your blessings. We must fight for every blessing that God has in store for us this year. Don't be passive. Take action to, to possess your blessings. Now God said to Joshua that he was going to give him Every place where he will set his foot, God had demarcated the blessings. He said, I'm going to give you all this land from this point to that point to that point. But God said to him, I'll give it to you if you step your foot on it. Amen? 
And so Joshua has to go out and fight for every bit of the promised land. And so step out and possess your blessings. Contend by going into battle to possess your blessings. Let me start off by reminding you that God loves you in a way that is beyond your understanding and my understanding. But the Bible underscores us in Romans 5, the Bible says, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now think about this. When we were enemies of God, God so loved us that he gave us his only son, Jesus Christ, to, to die for us so that you and I can be brought into the family of God. Even whilst we were sinners of God, we were enemies of God and living in sin. That is incomprehensible love. And so the question is this, if that is the case, if God loved us and gave us his very best, even whilst we were just sinners and enemies of God, if that is the case, why would God withhold any good thing from us now that we are his children? I mean, think about this. Why won't God give us his very best so that we can bring blessings and glory to his name? Paul reminds us in Romans 8 and 32, Paul says, He who did not spare his own son, but give him up freely for us all, why will he not, along with him, Jesus Christ, give us everything else? Graciously give us all things. In other words, what will God not do to bless his children? You see, God desires to bless you, but the enemy's goal is to, to, to block those blessings or to, to destroy those blessings. And that is why you and I must contend for every blessing that God has for us. Scripture makes it abundantly clear that God desires to bless his children. Remind yourself every single day that you are a blessed child of God. Amen? Let me try it again. Remind yourself every single day that you are a blessed child of God. Regardless of whatever challenges you might be going through, your trials will never end. Your trials will, will never you know, uh, you know, go on forever. Your blessings will overtake your trials at some point in time. If you believe it, put your hands together for the king. Amen? The Bible says in Numbers 23 and 20 and 21, the Bible says, I have received a command to bless. This was an enemy of Israel. King Balak was an enemy of Israel. And he said to, 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 to Balaam, who was a prophet, I want you to put a curse on the children of Israel so their blessings will not come to pass. And so Balaam tried over and over again. In fact, God almost killed him for attempting to curse the Israelites. And then finally, he concluded. He said, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. And then he goes on to say, no misfortune is seen in Jacob. No misery is observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. And then in Joel, you look at chapter 2, 25 to 26, you see the heart of God in terms of blessing his children. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. I will restore, I will multiply back to you the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Child of God, that is your portion. Your face will never be covered in shame because you are a blessed child of God. If you believe it, give the Lord another wonderful clap of his worthy. Amen. And then listen to Numbers chapter 6. Listen to 22, 27. I'm trying to make the point that we are blessed. God has a blessing in store for his children. The Bible says in Numbers 6, 22, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, God the Father himself spoke to, to Moses 
Because he wanted his children to understand that his heart toward them was to bless them. And so the Lord spoke to Moses and said, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, this is the way you are to bless the children of Israel. This is the way you are to bless my children. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine toward you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And so they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Listen, you are blessed because you have the name of Jesus on your life. Would you give the Lord another wonderful clap of faith? He's worthy, amen. And then Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. There are plans to prosper you, not to harm you. There are plans to give you hope and a future. Look at John 10, 10. The Bible says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. And so God's plan and God's desire is, is to bless his children, to give us a blessed life in abundance. But Satan's goal is to steal, to kill, and to destroy those blessings. Even including your very life, but he's a defeated foe. The Bible makes it clear in 1 Peter 5 eight. The Bible says, be alert and be sober. Because your enemy, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That is why he pounds on Job the moment God gave him the permission, he pounced on Job because he hated the fact that Job was so blessed by God. Listen, Satan can't stand it when the children of God are blessed, but there's nothing he can do about it if we know who we are and we walk in those blessings. Amen? And so God desires to bless you, but by Satan's goal is to, to block those blessings. That is why you must contend for your blessings. We are in the second half of the year. Now, I want to encourage you, strengthen yourself and keep pressing on because what God has in store for you will come to pass if you don't give up. For 21 days, Daniel stayed in prayer waiting for the answer to, 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 to his prayers. But the Bible tells us that the prince of Persia, who was an evil spirit, resisted that answer from coming to Daniel because that's how the enemy he wants to block the blessings of, of God's children. But Daniel contended in prayer until he received the victory. And so contend until you receive your victory. Now there's only one thing that I want to say to you today. And this is the second time I'm saying it this year. Contend for your blessings. Contend for your blessings. God has a lot in store for you. But, but you must contend for those blessings. You must take hold of those blessings. You must fight and take hold of those blessings. It's not enough to, to know that God has wonderful uh, plans for you. It's not enough to, to know that God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Even the devil knows that. It's not enough you know, to know that God has promised that he will not withhold any good thing from you as a child. It's not enough to know that the Bible says that God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You must contend for those blessings. You must fight for your destiny. Paul says something interesting to, uh, to, to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and 18. Paul said to Timothy, who was a pastor, Paul said to him, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies that were once made about you. A prophecy is something that God has in, you know, in store for his children that he will cause to be revealed to his children. That's a prophecy. And so a prophecy was given about the life of, of Timothy. And Timothy was a pastor trained by Paul. And Paul said to him, Paul, Timothy, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the revelation that came to you uh, from God about your life, the prophecies that were once made about you, so that by recalling them, by recalling those prophecies, you will fight the battle well. You will fight a good fight. And so in other words, 
I want you to recall the wonderful plans that God has for your life and then fight to make them a reality. Recall every prophecy and fight for it. Contend for the blessings that God has for you. Don't, don't just sit back. Fight to possess your blessings. Contend for your blessings. Now I want to use the story of Jacob as our main illustration for this sermon. So please turn with me to Genesis chapter 32. I want us to look at 21 uh, 22 through 31. And let me give you a little background to this story. There was a rift between uh, Jacob and his twin brother, Esau, as you do. And so, to avoid being killed, uh, Jacob ran off to live with his uncle Laban uh, for several years. And then, finally, uh, Jacob decided that he was going to go back with his family to the land of his birth. And this is what transpired the night before uh, he crossed over into the land of his birth to possess his destiny. Look at Genesis chapter 32, 22 with me. The Bible reads from the New Living Translation. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two seven wives and his 11 sons, and he crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. He wrestled with him all night long. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he took Jacob's hip and rained it out of his socket. Then the man said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, my name is Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you'll be called Israel because you have fought with God and you have fought with men and you have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied, and then he Bless Jacob there. He blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Penal, which means face of God, because he said, I've seen God face to face, and yet my, my life has been preserved. The sun was rising as Jacob left Penal, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. You see, the interesting thing about Jacob is that God had promised right from birth that Jacob was going to be a blessed person. But all through his life, Jacob had been contending for his blessings in the wrong way and with the wrong people. First, he contended with his brother Esau and deceitfully took away Esau's birthright. And that resulted in a family feud that you know, uh, caused Jacob to escape for his life. And then he went to live with his uncle Laban for, for several years. And then he contended with his uncle Laban for several years. And then finally Jacob decided that he was going to flee with his family from his uncle. But Jacob knew that the fight was not over. He knew that he had to keep contending uh, for his blessings. So finally, after many years, he came to realize that he had to contend with God himself uh, to be blessed. And so he wrestled with God for his blessings. He contended with God. And the Bible says that he contended with God and he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Jacob persisted all night long until God released his blessings. He wrestled with God until God left a mark on him. My question to you this morning is, are you contending for your blessings? Think about it. Are you really contending for your blessings? You see, sometimes you have to contend with God until he releases all that belongs to you. But when you contend with God, you are, you are simply telling God that God, what you have for me is so valuable that I'm asking you to release it to me. And I will not rest until I receive it. And God will not turn a deaf ear to you God will release the blessings he has for you just like he did for Jacob. 
the Bible tells us in Isaiah 62, this is what the Bible says in Isaiah 62, uh, 6 to 7. This is a passage that we are so familiar with in, in this church. The Bible says, I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will not be silent day or night. You who call upon the Lord, give yourselves no rest. And give God no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Give yourself no rest and give God no rest until God establishes you. And so God expects us to contend for our blessings day and night until we receive them. Give yourself no rest and give God no rest until God establishes your blessing. Give him no rest like Jacob gave God no rest all through the night until God said, I'm changing your name and I'm releasing your blessings upon your life. Don't, don't just sit back and expect the blessings to fall into your lap. Even when God decided to bless the Israelites by giving them manna from heaven, they still had to go out and, and then gather the manna. They, they had to go out and gather them. And so, contend for your blessings. Contend for your family. Contend for your children. Contend for your church. And the question is, how do we contend for our blessings? I said, I want to contend for my blessings, but how do I do that? Let me quickly mention five ways uh, to contend for our blessings. Number one, contend through prayer. Contend for your blessings through prayer. The Bible reminds us in Philippians 4 and 6, the Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Prayer and thanksgiving. And so God expects us to pray about everything, including the promises that is made to us. We are to contend for our blessings through prayer. Let me give you an example. The prophet Elijah uh, knew that uh, uh, God had promised to release the, the rains after the three-year drought. But it's interesting that in spite of the fact that Elijah knew God had given them, him the assurance that he was going to see the rains falling. In spite of that, the Bible tells us that Elijah had to pray for the blessings to come. Listen to the account in 1 Kings chapter 18. Look at verse 1 with me. After a long time, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to King Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. I will send rain on the land. So clearly, God had promised to send the rain. But, but how did the rains come? Look at verse 41 with me. The Bible says, And Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Just because God had promised, Elijah said, I hear the sound of a heavy rain. The promise was enough. To spare him on to faith and to believe that the rain was going to come. So I hear the sound of a heavy rain. And so Ahab went off to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of Camel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. That's a sign, a position of prayer. Go and look toward the sea as he was praying. Go and look toward the sea. He said to his servant, and then he looked up, and there was nothing. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. God had promised, but Elijah's, Elijah was contending for the promise to become a reality. Go seven times. Don't give up. Keep going back. And so the servant kept going back. The seventh time, verse 44, the servant replied, a cloud as small as a man's fist is rising from the sea. And so Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot 
and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the crowd blew back. The sky grew black with clouds. The winds rose. A heavy rain started falling. And Ahab rose off to Jezreel. Question. Did God promise that the rain would come? Absolutely. But did Elijah just fold his arms? No. Elijah fell on his face in prayer and he travailed until the rain started falling. Listen, maybe you've received a promise from God that the rains are going to fall and to end some drought in your life. Don't just fold your arms and, and wait. That's why I want to encourage you every time we talk about prayer, be it Monday night prayer, and we give an opportunity for the church to come together to pray, or the Friday end of end of month prayer rally on Fridays, or the five thirty prayers in the morning. Every time you have the opportunity to pray, get online, build the children of God, contend for your blessings. Contend for your blessings. And so don't just fold your arms and wait. Contend for those promises with intensive prayers. Go to the mountain and call on God. Cry out to God audaciously. Contend through prayer. Secondly, contend through faith. Contend through faith. Now, faith means that you believe passionately that even though the evidence seems to be moving in the opposite direction, God is still faithful and God is still able to fulfill uh, his promise to you. Now, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, 6, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. This is what the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because everyone who comes to God must believe that God exists and that God is, is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him or those who seek him diligently. God is a rewarder. If you seek him in earnest, he will reward you. Now, faith means you earnestly believe that God has the power to release his blessings and to fulfill the request that you've placed before him, no matter how long you've been waiting or how impossible the situation might seem. And so we know the story of Abraham. Abraham's body, the Bible tells us, was dead and Sarah's womb was also dead, but they still believed that God was able to fulfill the promise that he made to them. And so the Bible tells us in Romans 4 and 18, the Bible says, against all hope, against all hope, when it seemed as if the, the, the dream was dying and it wasn't come to pass, when it seemed as if you know, that job that you, you, you've been praying for uh, is never going to be released, when it seems that there's no way that, that the business is going to survive or take off, when it seems as if nothing is going to happen and you know, all that you've been praying to God for seems to be just being washed away, when it seems that there's no hope. So against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. And so he became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. The Bible says in verse 19, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. You don't have to deny the situation. You don't have to deny what you are saying. You face the reality, but you still have hope that God is able. So, so without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet, verse 20, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. Contend for your blessings. By continuing to believe that even when the evidence seems to be dying, God can still bring about a fulfillment. Amen? The Bible says to him who believes, all things are possible. Third, contend through the word. Contend through the word. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 55 verse 10, the Bible says, 
as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bad and flourish, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Now, the reason why Abraham was fully persuaded in his faith was because he knew that God's word would be fulfilled. And so, contend for your blessings by standing firm upon what God has promised in his word. The Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20, the Bible says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is said to us, or speaking by us, to the glory of God. And so contend for your blessings by reminding God of what he said in his word. Remind him of his word in Matthew 7 and 7. Remind him, Father, your word says, if I ask, it will be given to me. If I seek, I'll find. If I knock, the door shall be opened unto me because everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds and to him who knows, the door shall be opened. Remind him that, Father, you've said in your word that if I, being evil, know how to give good gifts to my children, then how much more would you, my Father in heaven, not give me good, good things? Uh, just as your promise. So, so contend by reminding God of what he said in his word. Four, contend by taking action. It's not enough to, to know that God desires to bless you. You must take practical steps to accomplish those things and make them a reality. Set your goals and take some practical steps to accomplish those goals. Work hard, whatever it is. You know, if it's school, uh, whatever it is that, you know, you are asking God to do this year. You know, anything that you've placed before him, set those goals and work hard to see those goals become a reality. So set your goals and take some practical steps to accomplish them. Now the Bible tells us in Psalm 81 and verse 10, the Bible says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide. And I'll feel it. In other words, God is saying, if you take the initiative, I will come alongside you and I'll bless you. God promised to give Joshua the promised land, as I said earlier on. But God also said something very interesting to Joshua. Look at Joshua 1 through with me. God said to him, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. I've made a promise, but I'll give it to you if you step out to possess it. And so God expected Joshua to take practical steps to possess the promised land. So contend for your blessings by taking steps, and God will flourish and bless your efforts. Amen? If you don't move your feet, hear me carefully, Chad. If you don't move your feet, to march around that wall of Jericho, that wall of Jericho will never come down. Do you hear me, church? But, but the moment you take steps to march around that wall of Jericho, even though it might seem foolish, because you are taking the steps, God will cause the wall to come down. Amen? If you believe it, put your hands together for the king. Amen? And finally, contend for your blessings through perseverance. Contend through perseverance. Sometimes the promise might take a while to materialize. But don't give up. Persevere. David was anointed to be king. But for several years he was on the run. There was a time when David had to do odd jobs just to survive. There was a time when he found himself sleeping in caves. This was the man who had been anointed by God. Listen, the fact that there's a promise on your life, the fact that there's an anointing on, on your life, doesn't mean that the journey will be easy. Even in spite of whatever promises God has made, or whatever anointing he's placed upon your life, or whatever giftings, there are times when you might go through trials and challenges and difficulties, but as you hear me say all the time, in the end, God always wins. If you believe it, would you put your hands together for the king, amen? 
Joseph had to persevere for several years and even endure slavery and imprisonment before his dream became a reality. Abraham had to persevere for 25 years. We read it earlier on. The prophet Elisha said to the prophet Elijah, I I want to receive a double portion of the anointing that I see operating in your life. The Bible says that Elijah looked at Elijah and said, you've asked for a very hard thing, a very difficult thing. In 2 Kings 2, 2, the Bible says, Elijah said to Elisha, see here, the Lord has sent me to go to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. In other words, I'm going to persevere until I receive the blessings. Elisha persevered until the moment when he saw the chariot of fire and the horses coming down because Elijah had said to him, if you see that moment, you will receive what you're asking from God. And Elijah said, I'm going to persevere until I see that moment. And the moment the chariot of fire came down and the horses came down, Elisha saw it and cried out, my father, my father, the chariots and horses of Israel. And the Bible says immediately the mantle came down from Elijah and fell upon Elisha because he persevered. If you persevere, that mantle will fall down from heaven upon your life. And every blessing that belongs to you will be released to you. If you believe it, give the Lord a wonderful clap of friend this morning. Amen. So persevere. Persevere until you receive your blessings. Contend for your blessings. Contend like the woman with the issue of blood until you touch Jesus at the hem of his garment. Contend like blind Bartimaeus until Jesus starts for you. Contend like Hannah at the altar until you receive your breakthrough. This second half of the year, contend for your destiny. Contend for that spouse that you are believing God for. Contend for your marriage. Content for your family. Content for your job. Content for your children. Content for your business. Content for that promotion. Content for your church. Content for the campus that we are believing God to put together for us. Let's give the Lord a clap of him because it will happen. Amen. Content for God's anointing upon your life and content for this nation. There's so much going on in this nation that we need to contend for the very soul of this nation. Amen. Content for every one of your audacious prayers, and God will answer. Would you rise up with me as we bring things to a close? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. Lord, we exhort you. Just get into an attitude of prayer as we bring things to a close. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.